Hi, my fellow networkers. This is Mohit Paul from Cisco Systems. I work with Cisco's wireless engineering test team. In this short video, I'll give you a quick rundown on how to configure Cisco's high availability solution on 5500 WLAN controllers using initial command line configuration wizard. I have two controllers here. I have done um, pre-config of both of them so that I can give you a quick feel on how to configure using the wizard for an out-of-the-box controllers. So let me take you to my controllers here. This is my primary controller here. This is my secondary controller here. Let me give you a quick you know, key point here. So if, when you decide you need to configure high availability on controllers for your network, you need to make sure that you know you have two controllers. Both of them have same platform, running same image. And also, the third thing that you need to make sure is the box that you're going to make your primary can be any device, any regular controller. The second, the second choice of secondary controller based on two factors. One, it's a SKU controller, meaning it has a zero AP. It will have zero AP license count. Or if you plan to use an existing controller from your setup, you need to make sure that there is 50 permanent AP count. That's a minimum AP count required to make a unit as secondary for HA. So we'll quickly go through this uh, configuration wizard here. That's um, it's asking me for my username. Okay, I'll give Cisco here. And Cisco, one, two, three. Let me, okay, I'll say DHCP. I don't want to enable lag. That's my local lab network. Router is 99.80.1. Management VLAN, mapping to port. Okay, yes, I want to enable HA. And as I said, this I'll, I'll make this box as my primary unit. So I'll say primary. It's asking me for the redundancy management IP address that's local to this box. I'll give this as 9980.6. And for peer, I'll choose to go with 80.8. .8. That's virtual gateway. I'll just give Mohit here. Mopa. I'll say no, I don't want this. Yes, no, US, yes, please enable the radios. Okay, I don't want to configure in TP server now, but yes, I can configure the system time. It's 093012, time is, let me check. Before I say yes here, I'll just quickly go to my secondary box, configure the username. I'll just say Mohit here. So I can do the... You know, any configuration I want, it's not necessarily that I have to configure same username on the secondary box because I know this box is going to be my standby. That's what is expected. And, uh, you know, I expect this guy to pick up the image. Uh, I'm sorry, pick up the configuration from the active. Okay, I don't want to enable this. The config... I'll say seven two five five two five five two five five dot zero nine dot nine dot eighty dot one eighty we'll map it to one uh, yes please enable and like I said this box will be my secondary and the local IP address for the redundancy management IP would be eighty dot eight the peer we configured was 80.6, as you can see here. So this is our peer, 90.6. Here we have to find the secondary redundancy management IP. Mobility group, I can say Cisco or whatever. You will say mobile slash open. I'm intentionally doing the uh, you know, diff different configuration on both the controllers so that you can see when this guy pair up. The configuration that's active on the box is from the primary controller. Okay, 
System time, yes please. That's zero nine three zero twelve. And the time is eighty dot three four, I believe. Eight. Yes. Okay, so we'll go to this box and say yes here. We'll let it save and reset. We'll do the same thing on the secondary. Save and reset. Okay, this guy is resetting now to come up with the new configuration. And there goes the secondary also. Right, so now when this this box will come up right during the boot up they will do the ha role negotiation so both the guys will find each other through the network and depending upon the license or the hsq that we have on the secondary unit right based on which they will say okay you have the you are the hsq controller so you take it take over a standby and i'll take over as active or either wise right so let this box come up. All right, so let's see how, how the boxes are doing here. This box is still booting up, and so is this one. That's my primary. I expect this to come as active. So, well, let me tell you this, you know, in the meantime, that the timer to detect the peer is 120 seconds taken by both the boxes. Here it comes. So see, the, it has started the redundancy service and it's looking for the peer. So what happens if it, you know, it does not detect its peer in, within 120 seconds? It will say the box is the other guy is unreachable. I don't have the communication with the, the peer, so I'm taking over as active. And if you see here. All right, so you can see here after the role negotiation, the primary has come up. We'll log into the primary controller first and check the redundancy summary status. So I can see the local state of this box is active. That's what we expected. And the peer, that means the stand secondary controller, which is standby heart here. Okay, so just a quick verification to see if it has the redundancy has really worked for us the configuration saying is worked or not so if you remember in the beginning of uh, while i was doing the initial configuration for primary i configured the user as cisco you can see here whereas for the secondary i made the username mohit so let me try with mohit as the username and this should fail All right and now we'll try with Cisco as a username here. It worked. So that means the configuration sync has taken place successfully. And you can see the prompt of the secondary controller is also changed to from Cisco controller to Cisco controller dash standby. That's how we identify the controller. And you can see the local state of this box is standby hot whereas the peer is active, which is right. It has inherited the AP license count of 500 from this box here. Right there. Okay. And we'll talk about other parameters in our uh, next upcoming videos. So I'll keep it short here. And... Uh, so this this video was based on um, configuration of HA on 5500 controller using initial command line interface configuration wizard. Thanks for watching this video. I'll be coming up with more videos on HA and other topics on wireless. Keep watching, keep tuned to my blog. And if you have any queries, feel free to post it in my blog. And uh, I'll be glad to answer your queries as soon as I can. Thank you.